Yo, what's going on, guys? It's been a while. My name is Vinci. I haven't uploaded in God knows how long. A true video, maybe in about a year. But you know, I, I like these live streams and I want to start doing them again. So, I think a good way to jump into that is by uh, revisiting one of the paintings that I originally painted on live stream about a year ago. Um, I've been doing a lot of things since. Um, I clearly have tattoos. Been getting into a lot of things. I've had, I'm on my third tattoo apprenticeship. Uh, I'm about a year in, starting my second year of tattooing. So it's going well. I've learned a lot. And I kind of want to apply everything I've learned, all the growth that I've accumulated over the past year, and I want to apply it to this painting because I've had this painting hanging up since then, and I've been looking at it, and I've been looking at it, and I've been picking it apart for the better part of a year, and I just think I can do better. So that's why we're here. I'm going to try to be doing these on a regular basis, maybe once a week, maybe once a day. I don't know. <laughs> so, this is where we're at. This is where we're heading. Uh, kind of a good, a good list, good laundry list of things that I want to do. Um, like in this in this past year, uh, I've kind of, kind of went broke broken things down to the bare fundamentals and I've been learning just the very simplest parts of art and I feel like it's benefited me greatly so uh, just off the top of my head like there's lots of things inside this pattern that just aren't very clean um, the way the paint kind of has has settled in I don't really like how it looks I'll probably go over the whole background now this sculpture the statue um there's a lot going on with it like there's values that aren't quite correct that i would love to just get right um and it's just an overall roughness that i i don't love and i know this video is going to be a little bit low quality i originally <laughs> i i said i was live streaming i had a lot of tef technical difficulties live streaming so i'm just gonna pretend we're live just gonna do it <laughs> and i'll just upload the video maybe premiere it i don't know casual sorry about the low quality we'll step that shit up in the future but i got my paints pre-mixed i got some different blues over here and then uh i'm gonna be using liquid light but yeah, other than that, I got some brushes. I think I'm gonna start with the sculpture. I'm gonna begin just um, getting some of these values more correct. I'm gonna clean up. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things I've learned is that uh, line quality is so very important and that's been something I have neglected in the past and I've gotten a lot better at it. And I just wanna, I wanna go through this, pretty much this whole thing and just make it neater, tighter, cleaner. I wanna blend out some of these gradients. I wanna change some of these values. Like this eye is not the correct value. I think it could be a little bit better. And along with like these lines, um, outlining the eye and just different parts need to be fixed. Um, yeah, but this painting is available on my website right now. So if you go down to the description, you can you can find this painting, you can find you can find this painting, you can find a whole bunch of paintings and you can buy them like now. Um, I'm poor, so I, I lower the prices. I don't know how long they're gonna stay low. Um, so go collect them, 
before somebody else does. Yeah. Fargo gives you access. Yeah. No. Another change. I started playing ads on my playlist that I use for live stream. What the fuck? Who okayed that? Who greenlit that? That's what I want to know. Another thing, if you are in Southern California, I'm now currently booking tattoos. Uh, I'm working out of Paradigm Art Collective. I got some flash on my website as well. If you want to go look at what I have available, I have lots of designs up there that I would love to tattoo. You can go reserve yours today now i'm getting this it's not the darkest value i have like black black is up here i got like a nine i got eight seven six five four three two and then this is just a little bit off white like it's not pure white i know it looks super white on camera but it's not quite um but i'm gonna go i'm gonna go for this this little eight value I'm not going to go pure black. It's not a lot of whole uh, pure black in this. Maybe that's maybe that's a good first step. Got a round brush. Got a sable. Is that what this is called? I think it's called a sable. Yeah. Anyway, I want to start with the eye. This eye, I've been looking at it. I've been looking at it. And it's not, it's not right. And this value that I've picked up is pretty damn close to what's on there. I think it's perfect for what I'm doing right now. One thing I want to grab really quick before I start going crazy on this. This is going to help me keep my hand off of, wow, there's hair. Disgusting. Okay. This is going to help me keep my hand off of the surface of the painting. Um... Because I don't want to smudge any paint that I put on from here on out. So I'm just I'm just gonna start working through this eye right here. I'm gonna be straightening up, straightening up these lines filling them out with some dark contrasty tones making that line quality nice and crispy Right. Now, instead of blending and mixing some of these colors with this brush, I'm going to keep this same value on this brush. And I'm not going to mix it. I have everything pre-mixed, so I don't I don't want to I don't want to mess up what I have already done. I'm going to pick up a uh, a 5 on the value scale. We could set this over here. Right. 
and I'm just going to touch this onto the canvas. It's actually a panel, but it's kind of the same difference. And I'm I'm seeing this paint is touching the canvas is the exact tone that's on there, which is perfect. So another thing I've I've been working on is while you're tattooing, while you're painting, one of the things you should constantly be doing is referencing your reference. You should not go too too long without looking at it, picking details apart like I can see, I can make that bigger, oh yeah, I can see these values right here are much darker than what I have on the canvas, so I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to, just going to darken them just slightly, not a whole bunch. Gonna build out some of these shapes in the eye socket. Because this is a five. This is a nice mid-tone. It's gonna blend in with your shadows and it's going to mix with your lighter tones very, very easily. So it's good to lay that on there. Now, instead of mixing the paint on my palette, I'm gonna go back to this brush. With a tiny amount of paint on it. There's not a whole bunch, just a little bit, just enough. And I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of the paint that's on the canvas. I'm gonna be cross hatching this darker tone. As you can see, this is it's pretty dark. It's a dark eye socket. It's not it's not as light as what I have on canvas, so I could even I could lay it on a little thicker. I could continue it all the way across the eyebrow. Slowly get thinner and thinner as I go across. Right. And then I'm just going to pull it out a little bit so it'll make blending in the next step easier. Let's see. So throughout this eye, in this corner especially, it's too light on my painting. I went way too light in this corner. This this eye is circular, so it's going to wrap around. It's going to fall into shadow over here, and it's not going to be mid-tones. It's not going to be light tones. It's going to be in shadow. One of the things I find myself doing often while I'm painting is jumping around from place to place fast. Um, and while this can be good for getting a lot of things done, if you really want to refine a painting and refine an area, a specific area, uh, you got to take some time, focus in on the little tiny details inside of an area, the little tiny values, the gradations. Oh, let's get this music back on. Nice. 
Looking good. Feeling good. So my goal right now is just to continue building form, refining some of these shapes, blending out areas, getting smooth gradients, and not going overboard. Right now, I'm gonna grab another brush. I'm gonna grab a little thin liner. And I'm gonna put a slightly lighter value on here. I'm gonna go with the three, pretty light. And I'm gonna hover in this three. I'm not gonna do too much up here. Like this, the, the one and the two lightness on the scale, I'm gonna reserve that to the very end. I'm not gonna touch it too much. I'm gonna keep it pretty basic and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do the bulk of my work. inside of this value scale. I'm not gonna hit the black too hard. I'm not gonna hit the white super, super hard either. I'm gonna use those as accents and uh, the contrasty values I put in there, the full blacks, the full whites are gonna be very, very targeted and it's gonna accentuate them. And it's gonna accentuate this piece a whole lot because uh, those uh, those super dark contrasty areas between white and black will draw the eye in. And I can really pick where I want someone to focus in on this painting. I'm gonna dip into my liquid. Make my paint a little more fluid, but I wanna make sure my paint is thick I'm not laying this on too thin. I'm not glazing. I'm just uh, packing them layers on this piece. If your paint is too thin, it's gonna get rubbed. It's gonna get bumped over time and it's gonna fall off your painting and it's not gonna last a whole lot, whole long time, whole lot of time. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, there's no expiration date on art either. So if you're working on a painting, like you can always come back to it in the future. You don't have to worry about finishing it right away. Um, things don't really develop unless you give them a whole bunch of time. Sit on it for a while, like really think about like what changes you wanna make, what you really wanna look at, uh, what you want it to look like, I mean. Um, like what mistakes you made, like what changes would make it better, that sort of thing. And this painting was finished for about a year until I decided, hey, I probably should work on that. I should probably fix some, some details. Like there's some definite issues inside the piece that need to be resolved. And it bugged me, to be honest. It's something that um, I think about when uh, those those mistakes kind of linger on. Now, I initially said this eye was much too dark, but you know, 
the thing it actually needed was just to be shaped more. It needed to be showing more form, the form of an eye. It's a spherical ball. Um, and when, when things inside of faces are off even slightly, uh, you notice them. You notice them a lot, and other people will notice them also because uh, you look at faces every day, you look at people in the eye every day, and you know what a face should look like. Doesn't really matter if it's ugly, if it's pretty, whatever. You know what a face looks like. You know how it how it should be formed, how it should look, and if the proportions are off, if it's a little janky, if whatever it may be, you notice. And you don't need to be trained in art to notice those types of things. So if you make art, you know, if you just look at art, there's a lot of shitty art out there. Things that aren't done well, I don't think deserve to be appreciated as much as things that are done well. And if you take some time to actually develop a work of art, or even anything for that matter, and you do it well, you do it to the highest standard, uh, your work will be appreciated. Even if that takes some time. a little bit of work and that eyes look and much much better cleaner crisper and this is this is just an empty brush I don't have any paint on this and I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna blend blend out some of the paint that's on here Go back to the five. And I'm gonna work right in between the highlight and this shadow, this crease in the eyeball. I'm gonna try to blend those together a little bit. Um, excuse you, Dollar Shave Club. You gotta pay me for that shit. That's not free. Back to the three. And we're still blending, mixing, 
smoothing, creating gradients. got this empty brush there's a little bit of paint on it from the blending I've been doing but I'm gonna keep blending some of this out and I'm gonna put a little bit of this light tone I'm just gonna brush it in create some form in this eye it's not a lot of whole light tones inside this eye so it's got to be super subtle back to the mid-tone we'll be working through the underside of this eyelid there's a dark shadow that falls across the top of the eye rolls across And it's a little darker than this mid-tone, so I'm gonna move back. Oh, I'm gonna move back to the eight. And I'm not loading up a whole lot of paint here. I got like a little, just enough paint on this brush to make it come to a point. I am not smearing a bunch of paint on canvas right now. I'm just uh, working with the bare minimum right now because I don't want a whole bunch of brush strokes I want the paint to be completely flat as flat as I can get it on this canvas because I took some time uh, last year beforehand just to, to sand this thing out like you can still see some of the marks from the sanding and um, if I cover this thing with another layer of paint a lot of those sanding marks are going to disappear and it's going to be it's gonna be nice and uh, shiny. It'll be a refined surface. Right, and that's just about all of the darkest tones in this eye so I'm gonna go back to this dry brush and we're gonna keep blending I'm gonna blend out some of these shadows the small bit of paint that's on this brush is gonna mix and it's gonna create some soft gradients It's gonna smooth out shadows. You don't want a whole lot of hard lines. You want to be. You want it to be a soft blend in between these tones. Those hard lines have a purpose, but for this specific scenario, you don't want a whole lot of hard lines. You want them to gradually roll into one, other, one another. 
making some gradients blending together I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to edit any of that out anyway. I don't know what happened, man. I gotta put advertising on my music. Like, what the fuck? Shit is not cool. And we're keeping on stretching, 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 stretching this small amount of paint that's on the canvas. And we're going to wrap it all the way around the bottom side of this eye. And as you can see, it's not doing a whole lot, but that's okay. Um, you can't move too quickly when you're looking to get these soft gradients you gotta blend it softly slowly tenderly or else it won't be soft if you get too much paint on the canvas it'll get muddy there will be paint strokes it'll be reflecting with I have a lot of bright lights here so if there's paint strokes on the canvas like you see all the ridges all the brush strokes you see each individual little thing on the canvas and it just doesn't look as good So I try to work through an area until there's no more lines. And then I try to let go because you don't want to do too much either. If you go too far, you will also lose the desired effect. So you got to find a nice balance. definitely also pays loads to have good lighting if you don't have good lighting you can't see what you're doing if you can't see what you're doing you're putting things on the canvas you don't even know about okay got this dry brush a little bit of medium on it and I am I'm gonna go for this tone right here. I'm gonna look at my reference. 
you're gonna see out of this corner of the eye there's this this swoop this whip um, that the crease of the eye comes down and it whips out towards the top of the eyebrow and I don't have that in my painting and if you have oops it's too light too light of a tone so I'm gonna go back to the five five seems a little better for this spot I'm gonna make a little gradient out of the corner of the eye. And on the top of the eyebrow as well, so that it's not just a thin line that separates the shadow from this highlight up here. Beautiful. Let me keep blending this out. Create a little drop shadow casted by this hair. Onto the side of the face. And down the side a little bit. It's a good start. So I am going to choose this right side of the nose. And I'm gonna I'm gonna zero in on that and I'm gonna I'm gonna develop it just like I, I did to that eye. As you can see, like the difference. This eye when I started looked much better than this eye, but we always move forward. You don't want to move down. And uh, one of the things I've found to be super helpful is keep your reference photo as close as you possibly can to your work of art. Like let's say if I had the reference photo up towards like where the camera is and I have to, I have to look up at the camera and then I have to look down at my artwork that, that second it took me to look down from from the reference to my painting i've already forgotten what i've looked at and what i'm trying to paint so i can i can eliminate that split second of time i can put it as close to my artwork as i can it's right on top it's, i don't have a whole lot of wet paint it's not a big deal so i can eliminate that split second save my short-term memory and um I can just I can just glance back and forth, back and forth, no problem. With ease. And I can get much closer to my reference photo than I would if I was not doing that. Okay. Now we got a lighter tone, we got a mid-tone. And it's gonna blend it out. You got this. I don't know if you can see. You got this side surface on your nose that just comes down off the side. You got a kind of a can think about it as a flat plane across the top of your nose and then you have the side plane that comes down and then it blends out towards your cheekbone and I somehow managed to botch that when I originally paint this painted this so I'm just gonna create that little side plane and it comes out out here quite a ways so 
little tiny subtleties that make such a huge difference. The big details obviously matter, but if you can get paint down on your canvas, if you can get a design set in place, dry, finished, um, you can you can go back in the future and you can say, hey, this tone's off, this tone's off, this tone's right, and you can you can find a better balance than you originally did. And your work of art will be much better. So you can you can take that initial step, make mistakes, make all the mistakes you need, and if you need to come back in the future and correct them, it's easy. Just taking the time to do it. Applying the effort, seeing your faults, and moving forward. You can solve a lot of problems. Very easily. You just admit your faults. So then you can see what's actually there. You don't have to argue or debate with yourself. I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna blend that little corner out. Discover credit cards yeah. automatically double all the cash back you earn at the end of your first year, which means Wait, 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 hold up. A little too sharp for my taste. Go ahead. Did I read that right? Discover automatic. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing before where I didn't have ads. But I would like to get back to that place. <laughs> Anyway, silence is helpful sometimes. I'm gonna stay on this right side of the nose. I'm not gonna work over yet, I'll get there. I don't need to rush. Just do one little thing at a time. Get some paint on the canvas. Touch a little dot down, see, is this too light? Is this too dark? That's a little too dark. I'm gonna go in a slightly lighter value and do it again. That's much closer to my reference photo, so then you can just commit lay that sucker on there and you can say hey this this bottom side of the nostril is too dark on my canvas it's a little lighter in the reference photo so i can take a mid-tone and i can build this form around the bottom of the nostril And even I can I can mix it with that tone I just laid down and blend it out. Create some gradients. Because the line in between a shadow and a light source is very soft. It's not super sharp in most cases. Move around to the other side. And this whole bottom side of the nostril is so much lighter than I had originally painted it. I 
it's not a highlight, but it's also not a shadow. Like, I had painted it very dark, like an 8, which is too dark. So, I have a mid-tone on there, and I can come back over it later. I can sprinkle a little highlight in there, sprinkle a little lighter tone if it needs be, but... That's a pretty big change so far. Now I'm going to jump back up to this liner, this three. Keeping the paint fluid. Now, that's pretty light. It's pretty light on the spectrum. There's still one, two, maybe even three values lighter than this tone, so it's good to always leave room. The, the, the drastic ends of the spectrum of light and dark uh, can be too harsh. Like usually the changes in between values is very subtle, very soft. I'm going to continue on to the top of the nose. Build out this bridge right up here. That stretches down nicely. During my workflow, it's important to not always be in go mode. I'm not trying to finish this now. I mean, I'm going to finish at this session, but I'm not trying to finish it right at this second. I got time. I got, I got plenty of time. I got plenty of patience. I got everything I need to finish this. So like in between strokes, while I'm looking at the painting, just taking deep breaths seeing what's there, seeing what needs to be changed, what doesn't need to be changed, because not everything does need to be changed. I got coffee, I got water, I'm chilling. Somebody needs to pay me, I think. I don't know who. Maybe it's the cocaine bear, but somebody needs to pay me. Now, gotta set some brushes down. Sometimes it's nice to have one brush. I don't need a whole bunch of brushes. It can get too chaotic. Now we have the shadow and the eye socket and it blends out, it blends out here. It rolls around towards the top of the eyelid. It's not just a hard edge. I'm gonna take 
I'm gonna take this mid-tone that I've been using and I'm gonna mix it a little bit. I'm gonna find a, a nice nice medium between these two tones. Cause that wasn't quite dark enough what I laid on the canvas a minute ago, so I'm gonna find a nice balance. And I'm just going to roll that form around. These mid-tones are just so versatile. They can go just about anywhere in your piece. And they're very good for blending things out, making things smooth, finding those happy mediums, it's very nice. bridge god what is this called right above the lips it's too dark on the painting it's much lighter on my reference photo so I'm gonna grab a lighter tone and I'm gonna continue to build the form without destroying what I have I have built already because that's very easy to do to go too far to do too much off the painting I'm just gonna double check my work just making sure the nose nice and straight everything lines up the proportions aren't gonna be wonky I'm gonna do what I did before and I'm gonna mix a little bit of the lighter tone in with this mid-tone, just creating that happy medium. And I'm gonna blend out this form. God, what is it called? This specific part of anatomy has a name. And I don't remember it. Mistakes are make great to make because you can always, always, always go back over them, blend it out, fix it up. It's all about learning. 
figuring out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And what may work for me might not work for you, so, I mean, it's good to be able to judge what advice to take, what advice to leave. Because I've had great mentors give me advice, and I'm just like, that doesn't apply to me. Like, that doesn't fully resonate. I'm not going to take that that one. Moving back up to the three. We're gonna start working towards these lips a little bit. By lips, I mean this specific part right above the lips. Not going directly into the lips yet, but I'm just going to be building the forms around the lips, the parts that accentuate the lips. And I'm going to do it with a little tiny brush. I don't got a, I don't got a big brush, just a liner. And I painted for years without using these. I didn't even have a clue about them. And I discovered them. And they're great. Okay, did what I wanted to do right there. I'm not gonna focus on this area just yet. I'm gonna go back up to the nose. I'm gonna finish that part. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. I'm gonna focus on creating that form. each individual piece of the face is so so important you can't skip out on anything and you need to do each 
individual element to a high level. Or personally, it just doesn't look right. And I just won't like it. <laughs> I won't like it if I don't. Going back to this mid-tone. We got the highlights in. The lighter end of the spectrum is Oh, there. I don't. I don't need to add any more light. Um, I maybe will eventually, but um, the the true form is is it's a little bit lower on the spectrum. It's not. Uh, it's not all highlights. Just gotta work through this nose, correcting any inconsistencies, blending the spots in between values. And ideally looking to make it look and feel like a nose. Now we got a slightly darker mid-tone. I'm just lightly dipping into the liquid. I'm not adding a whole bunch. I'm just sparingly using it to uh, loosen up the paint. Oil paint is, uh, it's a little um, thick. And if you can find a medium that works well for you, um, I like liquid light just because it, it loosens up the paint. Makes it spread onto the canvas easy. Um, and it doesn't seem to have any the Hogue Classic, returning. disastrous effects. Because uh, some mediums, they can yellow your paintings. Or if you use it wrong, it can, it can pretty much destroy your painting over time. So you kind of have to be careful about which medium you work with. But this one specifically makes the paint lay flat on the canvas. It eliminates brush strokes. And it adds a glossy effect, which I like a lot. Um, if you just use straight oil paint, uh, the paint can kind of get matte. It's not, it's not very glossy. Which doesn't look bad, it's just... Um, if you take, take the right steps, do some preliminary things, you can have a really awesome looking painting. Especially if you study what some of these old masters did with their works of arts, works of art, uh, the mediums they use, the techniques they used. Um, you can implement some of that in your own art and create some awesome effects. Right, 
I'm moving too far away from the nose. It's okay. And I'm starting to move through some of these values a little more. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be rigid so rigid in the specific piles that I've already dipped into. You can you can blend, it's okay. Um, I have just found it difficult when you start jumping from pile to pile with one brush and you have so much different paint on one brush and uh, you're not getting a consistent um, pull of paint. And then you've, you've mixed up the values inside of these, these swatches of paint and um, they're not going to be accurate towards what you are trying to paint and it can get all muddy which is not ideal but it's not the end of the world either These forms on the on the face are important individually, but the the connections in between them are almost equally as important to focus on. Because yeah, the lips are important, but if you if you build all of the forms around the lips, and then on top of that you paint the lips exceptionally, it's gonna look well. It's going to look good. It's going to feel good. But if just something feels off, if anything feels wrong about it, it's, uh, it's an issue. And if you don't resolve the issues, you just have a subpar artwork. Who wants that? I don't think I want it. Collectors don't want it. You, the viewer, don't want it. Portraits are a tricky task for any artist. Doesn't matter if you're experienced, if you're just starting out, anyone can have trouble with it. Yo, <laughs> my cats. We're an hour in. 
making progress let's see what time it is it is 5 p.m okay i would like to get moving on this So we got a light tone peeking out, peeking out on the lips here, on this top lip. It's not all shadow like I had it, so I'm just gonna, I've got a light tone in there and I got a mid tone on my brush and I'm just gonna blend around this light tone. I'm gonna mix it a little bit because it's not a pure highlight. I mean, it's not a mid tone either, but there's, there's a mix of the two. Slightly darker mid-tone right here. And I'm gonna blend it in. You don't need to get personal, like If you're going to make all that noise, I'm going to put you on camera. This is my gato. one of them. Let's get another brush in here. And I'm going to dip in. I'm going to dip into a two. Get some liquid. And this is, this is a very light value very very light I'm gonna use it sparingly but uh, some specific spots I want to use it like right on the tip of this nose it's a nice big highlight it kind of stretches around the edge there Then down here on the lips, see I got a three on this top lip right here, but if I go with a two on the bottom lip, the bottom lip's going to poke out a little more. It's much brighter than anything on there. And I'm not covering not covering everything I had laid down there before. Just enough to give that impression of form, shape. Right. Let's see. Uh, 
right here above the eyelid as well. It's a nice swatch of light. And I'm not being too mindful of my my brush strokes here. I'm keeping it a little, little messy. Adding some dimension to this cheekbone. Staying within the bounds of what I've already done. Not going too crazy because I don't think I'm going to take the time to blend all that out. I'm going to leave some of the brush strokes in there. Now, I'm gonna move to the other side. We're gonna hit this eye. Again, I'm gonna start with the darkest tone we're working with. About an eight, maybe a nine. It's, it's closer to an eight, maybe, maybe a nine. But not going too crazy. Just crazy enough. Brush in a small shadow there, work into this crease of the eyelid. And then right under the eyelid as well. This eye was a little bit better, well done. So I'm not gonna go as crazy as I did. With the other side, I'm gonna keep my lines nice and thin, leaving a lot of the paint that I had laid down before. Then dipping right into the corner of this eye. Building that form. That's just about it for the, the contrasty tones. Now going back towards a mid-tone and just touching the canvas. There's a lot of mid-tones over here, so I'm going to go even lighter. A little bit lighter with it. We're going to keep stretching, building. Working around the eye socket, up onto the nose, bridge. Blurring out any hard lines. Creating some nice gradients. Working through forms. And 
I'm just going to dip my finger right into this. A little too much paint on the canvas. And I'm just going to keep stretching these values out. I'm not adding more paint to the canvas. I'm just stretching what's already there. And what's already on the brush. So. Keeping it minimal. I'm going to start working through this eye. I'm going to start right next to these shadows. I'm going to put a, a little lighter mid-tone. And continuing on to build form throughout this eye, just like I did with the other one. Dude, 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 you gotta get down, bro. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. You gotta get down, dude, you gotta get down. You gotta get down, bro. You can't be afraid. Come on, get down. You gotta get down, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude is bouncing off the fucking walls. Okay, now I'm gonna start jumping around a little bit. I'm not gonna be um, focusing in on specific areas anymore. I got I got the eyes 
Ah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hit the eyes a little more. And looking at this reference photo, this section of the eye is super soft. I have it, I have a highlight in there on the painting. And the reference photo is much, much softer. It's not a hard highlight. It's not a, it's not a bright uh, life light in there. It's very, very soft. I'm just blending two different values, two different midtones together, working from one, bouncing to the other, and just uh, smoothing things out. And I'm just gonna stand up to look at this straight on front, full frontal, because um, I have it. I have a flat on a table. Um, it's nice to get a full view of the thing. I don't want it to get too distorted uh, working from the side like I have been. Got to get different views of your work of art. Can't get stuck in one place. You got to get different angles, squint your eyes and look at it. See it in different lights. All those things can help. Now I'm gonna hit this uh, underside of the eyelid. Brush a little highlight in there. I gotta be careful because I don't want it to get too wide. It's gonna be pretty thin. An accent.
Now, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say I'm fairly happy uh, with everything that's, that's going on on the face. Um, little hair right here, but you know, got little fucking cats running around. <laughs> I can't help that. Uh, so I think the next stage is moving throughout the hair, refining all of that. Uh, I'm just gonna put some quick highlights here and there. Blendy, blendy. Jake from State Farm here. stick a, I'm gonna stick a little tiny little tiny light in the eye nothing too big nothing too crazy right last thing I'm gonna do is uh right under this chin there's a nice dark shadow and it's just gonna hug the bottom of this tone right here i'm not gonna go crazy with it i'm just gonna i'm gonna stick it in the corners so under the face On to the ornate details of this sculpture because no light is going to be hitting any of this so uh, oh this under here is going to be darker I'm gonna place these tones in and I'll work through and blend them out Just brushing a little paint off my brush and work through. The paint that's on the canvas and wow, some of some of my line work on here is wonky, but uh, it's an easy fix.
I'm just lightly brushing in the paint that's on the canvas and I am being very careful not to go too far. Um, it's not the end of the world to get paint uh, where it's not supposed to be because it's oil paint. You can wipe it off, but uh, uh, I just want to be a little meticulous with what I do because I don't want to have to come come back over again uh, to finish any of this because uh, this is going to be the final session. I don't think I'm going to touch it after this. So I'm just going to make sure all my loose ends are closed all my t's are crossed my eyes are dotted and just making sure everything looks exactly as it should without getting a whole bunch of oil paint on my computer. I'm gonna go grab a napkin. As you can see, brushing some of this stuff out with uh, a cloth paper towel or whatever you can you can achieve some of those smooth blends that would take a little longer if you were using a brush and you can get all the paint off of the tips of your fingers So this bottom part looks pretty good. I don't think I want to touch really anything in there, but uh, I really want to work through the hair. Uh, really, really smooth out. Smooth out things throughout. Because uh, that's where there are a lot of loose ends. And I got my brightest tone in here. And I'm just going to be working through this hair. This is very nice because uh, if I get paint anywhere where it shouldn't be, got a little, got a little paper towel. I'm going to rip it in half so it lasts longer. I'm going to wrap it around my finger and I can just, I can just wipe off little ends, little edges that are not so perfect. And it's like a gradient in a box fast it's easy I'm gonna go back to a smaller brush I'm not gonna go overboard with highlights little guy just gives me a bit more control over what I'm putting on the canvas so 
So if you can control what you're doing fully, um, you're never out of control. And the main thing I'm doing right now is just uh, making some of these lines more saturated with value. And I'm cleaning up the shakiness inside, inside the lines too. I want a nice sharp tip on my brush right here because I'm working through these hairs uh, and I don't want there to be a whole lot of fluctuation in the line weight. So I can make it nice and consistent, neat. Just by loading my, my paintbrush up in a specific way where my brush is nice and sharp. And I can create some consistent marks each time I'm putting paint on the canvas. And that's another thing uh, tattooing taught me is la chichis. Um, while you are tattooing, you hold your machine in a specific direction every single time you're making a line or even a mark. So every single time you pull a line, it's going to look the same. Where you're not going to have a whole lot of bumps or inconsistencies.
cool. Every mark you make on the canvas matters. And it can be okay to ma make mistakes, but if you make too many mistakes, you have a failed work of art. So just be mindful of each mark you make, each stroke you make. contributes to your piece. And it can feel like a waste of time picking apart details, doing too much. And sometimes it is, but it's worth it to take your time, not to rush, build something up from the ground. and you'll keep it forever.
Okay. Work through some of the hair. Now I'm going to get through. I'm going to hit some of these leaves. And uh, again, it's it's the same concept. We've been working through this whole time where I'm just building form, creating shape. Allowing for depth and dimension. Some little spheres throughout the hair here. This is basic. A little basic stuff. Just rounding out the forms, creating that shape, blending things out, doing the small things well can have some uh, really great effects. I break things down and learn the basic fundamentals. And then those fundamentals apply to everything, so 
you're essentially just doing the same thing over and over again. Now I'm going to find some, uh, some black, just pure, pure black. And I'm going to hit these core shadows. And I got a nice mix of liquid inside of this black that I'm painting on the canvas right now. So, um... It's going to be glossy. It's going to be very deep. Um, but it's very, very important that I keep all the paint that I'm putting on the canvas right now very flat. I don't want a whole bunch of brush strokes. Because those brush strokes will uh, not look well inside the shadows. Because shadows are flat. They have virtually no detail. And those brush strokes will appear as detail and um, they'll come forward making your shadows not as effective, which is not ideal. Sprinkle some core shadows in there. trying to decide if I want to do more on this piece at a later date or I should just finish it right now because uh, you can't just abandon it. But I do have to move on to other things, so I don't know what's going to happen.
Yeah. So the very last thing I am going to do right now, I'm going to clean off a brush and I am going to just hit this background with a deep, deep blue. I'm going to get two different brushes and um, just going to make sure it's all detailed, all, all super fine. Um, And in this part specifically, I am going to be doing very, very thin uh, amount of paint. So it's gonna it's gonna be akin to a glaze. Right, I got my paint ready. I think I'm done with the music for tonight. Those adverts driving me nuts. Just kidding. So we begin. Maybe, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glaze the background. I think that's a much better solution to my issue. I don't feel like reworking all these details. But I would like a nice deep blue. So they'll show through, but uh, all the little mistakes in there won't be as prominent. Because really, realistically, I was planning on spending one hour finishing this piece, and we're an hour over that uh, goal, so we're just going to wrap it up. being mindful of all of my edges here uh, I don't want to have any paint on the sculpture and I would like a soft blend uh, in between the sculpture and the background so it's not going to be a hard line edge of this thing Wells Fargo lets you know where you stand with your FICO credit score
like spit on the painting. <laughs> anything to increase the value. For this, I'm using a ultra French ultramarine blue. And it's thin. It's thin because I want to create a satin, almost maybe like a fabric, like effect on this background. I'm going through it and I'm brushing out all my brush marks. I want it to be smooth. I don't want there to be any uh, painterly feeling back here. Got to stretch out my paint a little more. Got too much on the canvas. All right, in this section over here. And if there's too much, it'll lose the effect I'm going for, so I got to keep it thin. And it'll give this painting... Uh, the appearance of a lot of space from the foreground and the background. And I don't have to pull my eyeballs out doing all that detail work. Because uh, I was wanting to really refine all of it all the stuff all the floral elements inside the background but um i can't be bothered right now maybe i'll come back to it in the future maybe not probably not but if i hate the look of this um, I can, because I'm the artist, and I can do whatever I want. But I'm kind of digging how it turns out, how it's turning out. And with this gold frame I have for this painting, I think it's going to pop. I think it's going to pop super hard. Before I started this session, I made sure to clean this entire painting very well. 
because I knew I was going to cover pretty much the whole canvas in paint. And if there's hair, if there's dirt, there's things on there from, from the year this painting sat on a wall, uh, all that's going to go into the painting and I didn't want any of that. So I spent a good amount of time just brushing it off cleaning, preparing my surface, just to make sure none of that uh, imperfection, imperfections make it into the final painting. I guess to some point there's no, there's an inevitability of that. You can go into museums and you can see all these old, old paintings and you can find the uh, little hairs from the, the brushes or different things inside the paintings. But if you negate that and you keep all your stuff clean, your paintings look even better. And one of the things I forgot to mention is this medium is a fast drying medium, which has the opposite effect of what oil painting does really well. And it dries, oil paint dries slow. And if you speed up the drying process, you can kind of lose out on uh, the time you would usually have to really work and blend things out. Last little section to go here. I want to thank you guys for joining me. We have made it to the end of the video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. This painting is available on my website. Somebody please purchase it. I'm poor. Check out the back. Little flower of life pattern. Um, yeah. 
um, I'll be back for more videos in the future. If I'm not, you better be in the comment section talking shit. Telling me to get on it. Because I like it here. I like YouTube. I like making videos. I like making content for you. And hopefully soon I can be on a regular schedule. Been getting more organized with things. My life is a little more structured. But yeah. I love you.